Okay, we are almost through with Module 3. We've been talking about how to customize the QuickBooks environment in this module. This is the second part of the chart of accounts, so I want to go ahead and continue where we left off from Part 1. I believe when we left off, we were talking about our asset account, so let's move down to the next type. Now, one type that's not here I want to mention is your accounts receivable. Accounts receivable would be any invoices you've created that you have not yet been paid for. The reason you don't see it here is because there aren't any invoices in here yet. Once an invoice is created, it will automatically create the accounts receivable account in this list for you. The same thing with accounts payable to show up a little further down the list. Once you enter a bill, then QuickBooks will create the accounts payable account for you. So you don't need to set those two up. The next type are your liabilities. A liability is something the business owes, like a loan for example. You're going to hear two terms referred to in accounting. Those are short-term liabilities, and QuickBooks calls short-term liabilities other current, like you see a few here. Those are things you're going to pay off in 12 or 13 months. A long-term liability is something you're going to pay off in more than 12 or 13 months, like a 5-year car note or 30-year mortgage. The two that are set up here are my payroll liabilities and my sales tax payable. And those are set up because I told it in the Easy Step interview that I do collect sales tax and I do payroll. The reason these are considered liabilities is because if you think about payroll, you actually deduct taxes from an employee's paycheck and you have to forward those pretty quickly. The same thing with sales tax. You charge a customer sales tax and then you have to forward it. So that is something that you owe and it's short term. Let's go ahead and set up a car payment so you can see how you would set up a long term liability. I'm just going to right click anywhere and choose new. Now this is a little misleading right here because if you choose their loan option they have here, it assumes a short term liability. You want a long term, if remember if it's going to be paid off in more than 12 or 13 months. So you're going to choose that option right down here where it says long term liability. I'm going to hit continue and then here's where you can name the account. You can name the account anything you want. If you want to call it car payment, if you want to call it the name of your bank and the word loan at the end, that is up to you. You're going to see a lot of times in accounting that accountants like to name loans notes payable. So I might say something like notes payable auto loan, but that is totally up to you what you'd like to name this account. There is a place for a description and a place for the account number. Again, those are optional. I am going to enter the opening balance. This means as of the start date of your company file, how much money did you owe on that loan? I'm just going to put in here $5,000 and I'll go ahead and choose October 1 in this case and click OK. Notice when I save and close, I now have a new long-term liability and I owe $5,000. Something I see often is people will actually make their car payment and they'll put it to an expense account down here. Your car payment is a loan. It is a long-term liability. Don't you want to know how much you have left to pay on that loan? And this is the only way to know that because this balance is going to come down. Every time you make a payment on this loan, make sure you put it to this account. That's where the principal is going to go. And then it'll come down and you'll know about where you are at any given time with that loan. You can set up as many of those as you like. Another one just to think about is sometimes a small business owner will actually put, let's just say they put $1,000 into the business to start it. You might consider it the cost of doing business, but you may also set it up as a loan so that the business can pay you back when it has the money to do so. That's how you're going to set up your liabilities. The next one I want to talk about are credit cards. A scenario that I see all the time is someone will receive their visa statement in the mail and they will enter it as a bill in QuickBooks. That is not the correct way to do this because what happens is if you don't pay the entire bill, 
then the next month when the statement comes in, it's going to say you owe 800, let's say, and 300 of it was left over from last time. So you're going to have the snowball effect going where you never pay off all the bills and it's just not the right way to do things. Credit cards should be set up in your chart of accounts this way. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose new. Notice credit card is on the list and I'm going to hit continue. You can name your credit card anything you want. I'm going to call mine Visa for now. I'm going to go ahead and put in my opening balance. Let's say it was $1,800 as of my start date and I'll save and close. And now you'll notice you have a Visa card and you owe $1,800 on the card. Again, you want to be able to look at this and see at any time how much you have left to pay on the credit card. Let me just show you something. If I go back to my home screen for a minute, do you see this right here, enter credit card charges? That was not here before I created that account. The correct way to enter credit card charges is right here. You enter each charge separately and when you make a payment, you go back and make the payment to the Visa credit card account. We'll spend time on that in a later module, but this is the correct way to do this. We've got a few more to talk about. Let's talk about equity. Think about the word equity, it means equal. Any time that you want to move money from one account to another, you might want to consider that equity. Here's a good example. As a small business owner, you own the business. So technically, if you take $100 out at the ATM machine of the business account to spend it on whatever you're going to do, technically that's already your money. You might buy gas, you might be buying some pizza for the kids, who knows. That's considered an owner equity anytime you take money out of the business. If you put money into the business, it's considered an owner contribution. Many times if you're a very small business owner and you're not incorporated, then that's how you would pay yourself through what they call an owner draw. That would be owner equity. Let me show you how I see this set up often. Often I'll see account new and the type is equity. And what happens often is you'll see there is a name for the main account and then I'll save a new and now I'll set up the contributions and the draws like I was just mentioning and here's a good idea of how to use a sub account. Contributions is a sub account of owner. And let me do one more. I'm going to do draws and again that's a sub account of owner. Now when I save and close look at how this looks now. It's a main account with two sub accounts below. So when you take money out you're going to put it to owner draw and when you put money in you're going to put it to owner contributions. Be careful about taking a lot of money out of your business, especially if you are incorporated, because you want to keep your contributions more than your draws. Remember, if you're not incorporated, you do pay yourself through draws, so that's a little different. But get with your accountant on this, because you don't want the IRS looking at you because you're taking all this money out of your business. Moving down the list, let's talk about income. Income is a sale you make for the business. You create an invoice and you make income. You can just keep the one account if you want, or you can have multiple different types of income accounts, but you don't want to have too many here. The next one you see here is what they call cost of goods sold. Sometimes you have to buy a product or you have to buy a service to make a sale for your business. We call that a cost of goods sold. Sometimes people will put things like that under expenses and that's okay too. It's just where you'd like to see it. Now the largest type that you're going to see here will be your expense accounts. And you'll see we've got a few here, but there's quite a few more you'll probably want to add. Just looking down this list, I see that automobile, for example. Yes, I can put the gas, the car wash, all of that under automobile expense, but if I ever want to pull out a report to see how much I spend in gas, I wouldn't be able to do that because there's no sub account below. So here's a good example of adding sub accounts. I'm going to add gas. So I'll right click on automobile and I'll say new. It will be an expense account because it has to be the same type as the main account. I'm going to call it fuel just to be a little more professional here. It'll be a sub account of automobile and I'll save and close. See that? And then I would go in if I wanted to and add repairs and maintenance. Going down the list, I've got computer and internet. There's insurance expense. 
Often businesses have several different types of insurance. They might have car insurance, they might have um, health insurance, they might have all kinds of different insurances, workman's comp, all of that that they need to track and often they'll put it all under insurance as sub-accounts. You'll notice there's payroll expenses down here so you may want to put some sub-accounts there if you wanted to add for example your fee for the payroll service, if you wanted to add your fee for the net of all of your paychecks, there's lots of things you can put under payroll expenses. Professional fees a lot of times I'll see the accountant as a sub-account, I will see the attorney as a sub-account. You've got repairs and maintenance, telephone. I always thought this was weird that telephone wasn't automatically under utilities. The way you would change that is right click on telephone and edit. This is how you edit an account. Just make it a sub-account of utilities and save and close. You also have an account at the bottom called Ask My Accountant. This is where you're going to put things that you really don't know what to do with right now and later you can go and move them or talk to your accountant about them. That's a real quick summary of how you need to set up your chart of accounts. Why don't I have you go ahead and go over to Section 4 now with me and we're going to take a quick look at one of the sample files QuickBooks has. I want to show you that once you get your set up, what the preferences will look like, what the chart of accounts will look like, and that way you know that you're on the right track when you're actually working and setting yours up. Go ahead and flip over to Section 4 and I will meet you there. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel. Click over there to get the complete seven hour course for QuickBooks 2018 and click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.